it's kind of cool because it started with Florida and Texas, so we kind of got that out of the way, and now we're in the, on the East Coast, and it's been beautiful. Three days of amazing weather. I also think everyone hypes it up a lot. Everyone's like, warp tour, hot, sweaty, sun. Like, it's just kind of Captain Obvious statements. I just think you've got to get out there, squeeze the juice out of every day. Yeah, as long as you don't make a big deal about it, it kind of, it's there, but, you know, not in your head. I think what Warp Tour offers, rather than everything else, is uh, it's right there for the fans. Uh, the fans are right there, everyone's doing signings, everyone's hanging out, walking through through the crowd. There's, there's no kind of backstage hangout kind of thing. Everyone's, everyone's involved and uh, there's a lot of opportunities for fans to get really close and involved with everyone. I think what Kevin does with switching up uh, the bands every day is fantastic. It's great for the fans that they have to come here from 11 o'clock. Your favourite band might be playing at 11.30, you never know. I mean, it's kind of hard for us because we don't know what's going on every day. You know, we might be playing at 8 o'clock, we might be playing at 12 o'clock. So your day is different every day as well. And I think what it offers for bands, it's really important, it helps Tonight Alive a lot, is that you have to love what you do to be here. You can't be a band that takes this for granted. Otherwise, it, it doesn't work in your favour. It's like laws of attraction. If you don't care about Warp Tour, if you don't love Warp Tour, the magnet will turn you the other way and it will spit you out. For us, like, this taught us to love what we do and respect what we do enough to get up every day and make it count. I think uh, the change wasn't a conscious thing at the start, you know. Uh, we've never really wanted to do the same thing twice. And we kind of just pushed ourselves. We, I, I mean, we did do, we wrote a whole record that was the same as our other record, we scrapped it. We wrote about 14 songs that we thought, we were like, yes, this is it. We kind of showed it to our a &R guy, who's been with us from the start and our manager and they were like, this is great um, and we can do this if you want, but I think... It's the other side 2.0. Yeah, it, it's our last record, you know, the same thing. And it's the double disc to our last record. <laughs> then we pushed through and, and kind of found ourselves and found what we wanted to do and we knew it would be a big change for everyone, but it was a change we needed to do it as people and, and we're, we're so much happier for it and I think our fans are as well. I think by living our truth and by writing a record that came so naturally to us, it's attracting people who want to live their truth as well. Writing our record Limitless was really a reflection of what was happening in our personal lives. So it was kind of like more of a conscious choice to change and to shift in our reality, in our happiness and things like that. Whereas writing the other side came from a really difficult and dark place. Um, that wasn't our choice to be in. So that's why it's so much friction and emotional tension on that record, whereas Limitless is, is talking about freedom and openness and consciousness, ultimately following your highest excitement in life. And that's why I'm the happiest I've ever been right now on tour, because I feel like the album is living through me and I'm just a vessel for a positive message. I love what we did with the record because I feel like it's the sound of my soul. I just feel like I didn't filter it, I didn't manipulate it. Um, and that's why I enjoy playing it so much as well.